Scheme stands for System for Cross-Domain Identity Management. It is a lightweight protocol identity management standard which is designed to manage identities across multiple applications. In this diagram, the client sends a REST API request over HTTP to the Scheme web server and in return, receives a response, in JSON format. You can use the GET, POST, PUT and DELETE REST API operations in CA Directory Management UI. The CA Directory Management UI 14.0 installer includes a scheme sample that can be tried out by users to understand how the scheme REST API feature works. The sample consists of pre-configured schemas and resources for ease of use. This video will cover the steps to configure the scheme sample in your system and perform the REST API operations in CA Directory. I am going to demonstrate the steps to configure the scheme sample. As part of the setup for the support for skim, we have added a sample that supports the skim2 dataset to the directory samples. And this sample script when run, creates a DSA with a dataset that is then available to test out the skim API. It's run by going to the sample skim2 directory, and running the setup batch file or setup shell script. This script is building a DSA that is then available for testing out the skim feature. We can connect to this DSA with JXplorer on port 20389 that supports an anonymous bind. And you can see the data that's being loaded. We have a number of organizational units with users in it, and we have a number of groups. Now that we have the sample skim DSA available, we can add it to our environment, or add the host that is running in our environment. And then we can look at what's available to us through the DSA. Now when I log in to the interface, you can see, that I have already created an environment. And now I just need to add the host that contains the DSA. To add the host, I am just going to put in a host name, the name of the server, and I have got the certificates that I can connect to the host. Just paste in the certificate content. I have created the host. If I look into my environment, you can see that I have the DSA that was set up by the sample script available to us. You have to kind of do it in that order. Run the setup script, and then add the host, and then we will import the configuration in the UI. We can now take a look at the skim configuration. There is a new left navigation that gets you to the skim. You can see the first tab here is the schemas. So these are default configurations that show. For example, the user schema that is loaded by default. You can see the configuration that has the definition, and it has all of the attributes that the skim standard expects, with their definitions of what they are. For example, we have the username which is a string, with read write etc. So all those configurations are loaded by default. We actually have another schema, that we have added, which allows you to map directly to the inetorg class, which is not compliant exactly with the skim standard. But to be compliant, you need to have an auxiliary class that supports some of the additional attributes required by the skim standard. And our sample has that auxiliary class, and I will be demonstrating that for you as well. Since we have the schema, and we are going to use the user in the group schema, we can go and create the resource type. Now the resource type is really, the objects or components that we are going to be loading. And we are going to be creating a user resource. We are giving a name to the user resource, adding a description, and the endpoint is generally the plural form of the name. Now for the parent DN, we are going to be looking at just one of these OUs. We are going to copy the DN for the users, and this is going to map to the user schema. And once we have got the schema, we are actually going to do a little bit of mapping. So first we need to get the LDAP schema of the DSA, because we are going to map the skim attributes to the internal LDAP attributes. And for the users, we are going to have inetorg person. But as I mentioned, we need an auxiliary class, to support the additional skim attributes required by the skim standard. 
There are some variable attributes, so we are going to pull from the sample demo, an auxiliary class that supports SIM2. Now the mappings are all of the skim to LDAP attribute mappings. And with this sample, we have a set of default mappings that you can load to pre-populate all of the skim attributes. And I am going to do that. And you can see that, we have got all of these attributes, and they have been pre-mapped to the LDAP attributes in the schema. For example, email is one of those skim attributes that requires connection to the auxiliary class. Now that we have got these attributes, we can create the resource, and we can create the group resource very similarly. Add the name as group, description as groups of users, endpoint as slash groups. I am using the DN of the groups. Using the group schema from the dropdown. We are using the groups of names. And for attribute mapping, we just have one attribute for groups, and we are creating that. So we have two resource types that we are going to use in our demo. And now we need to connect these resources and make them available in an instance. This is the running of the skim server. So we are going to create a skim instance. We are going to add the two resources that we created to this instance so that this instance can support those. We also require authentication to get to the API, so we are going to authenticate the users from the user resource. We are running it from our skim DSA. Now that we have created the DSA, we are also going to add the relationship. We have got the user in a group and we need to show how they are related. We have the users on one side and user is connected to group skim attribute and we are going to be displaying the display name of the user which is cn and on the other side we are connecting it to the group which is the members attribute which will be the cn as the display this is bound to the ldap relation attribute of member so this is a one-sided relationship Now that we have got the main setup on the DSA, the relationships, we can create this instance. Now that we created the skim instance, we can enable it, which will make it available for testing. Navigate back to the skim page, where you will find the API button that launches the swagger. The swagger is created automatically. Based on the configurations, it needs an authenticated access, so I need to put in one of the users. I am going to put in Craig Link, and the password for this account is the email address of the user. I can log in and see all the resources that I have configured. You can see the user in the group resources that I created. The model here is defined based on the skim to LDAP mapping attributes. This is an authorized UI so it requires basic authorization in order to access the API. I am going to use the same user again, Craig Link. And once I'm authorized, I can test out some of these APIs. For example, I can get all of the users using the tryout option. You can see here. I retrieved 150 results. These are all the users in the system. In Skim API, there are some parameters that you can use to control the response for get operation. For example, you can use a filter, pagination or sorting. You can sort by the display name. And I can set it to give me the first four entries in the system. So I get to see a different result order. The result displays only four display names and I can see the pagination picked up the first four results. I can also do a get 
of the groups. For example, I can get all of the groups. Click the try it out option. Here are the results of the different groups in the system. You can also get a group by the ID. If I supply the ID as a parameter of that first group, you can get just that first group. Now, the post works pretty much the same way. You can post a new group, or you can post in a user. Posting the user is really just providing the information about the user. When I do a post, I have this sample body where I can provide just a little bit of information. I don't need all the attributes to post back. I can put in my name here. I am removing these attributes as I don't need them. I can put in the email ID. and I don't need the rest of it. I can post that now. Now you see that a response has been created. I have an ID attribute, and if I want, I can also search for my ID by using the users by ID. Try it out. Put in the ID and execute. You can look for this ID in the J Explorer, And you can find Rob Lenberg here, in the system. You can see the attributes that I have added. For example, the email, display name, etc. So, that was a quick example of how to configure and use the Skim API, and the resources that are there. You can certainly configure other resources under other organizational units, and try out other operations. Thank you for watching the video.